Hey, good morning, Z3 Kimball students. Today we're going to do a little math video on something we hadn't worked on very extensively before we left. It would be subtracting a mixed number from another mixed number. If you remember, mixed numbers mean we have a whole number and then that fractional part from another mixed number. Uh, in the last math video was subtracting a fraction from a mixed number and we use three different techniques, a visual model, number line, or decomposition. We're still gonna use those same skills, but today we're gonna do it with a mixed number from another mixed number. I also wrote this one into a bit of a story problem just so we can really get that application level of mathematical skills practiced out. At the movies, Javette ate five and one third handfuls of popcorn. Aiden ate two and two third handfuls of popcorn. How much more did Javette eat? Anytime you hear those how much more, how much taller, how much older, those are subtraction problems because you're looking at the difference between two numbers and you're wanting to find the result. Um, so I started out over here, I wrote five and one third minus two and two thirds equals X, getting us started for algebra where any letter just stands for an unknown digit or number at this time. So I started this one with a visual model. On Tuesday, I think I used circles. Today, I'm gonna to use that bar model uh, tape diagram, we sometimes call that, just so we can remember that as long as we have something that represents or constitutes one whole, that shape can be different. In this case, our unit fraction is thirds, so I have divided each of our one, two, three, four, five, six bar models into thirds. I'm gonna shade them in very quickly here. We go one third, two thirds, three thirds, that would give us one. We go one third, two thirds, three thirds, giving us two. Improper fraction there would be six thirds. Another three thirds. I am now up to four holes. Now I'm at five. And I fill in that one third. So here we have a visual model that represents five whole objects and then a fractional part as one third. And then we get to the easy part. Now we're just going to subtract two and two thirds. Well, in my mind, the easiest way to do this is just to start crossing them off. So let's cross out two thirds first. There's one third. There is two thirds, right? That's gone. And now I'm going to subtract two wholes. So let's go one, two, and let's see how many we have left. We have one. We have two and two more thirds. So our answer here is going to be two and two thirds. Now let's switch to the number line. Okay. I'm not going to start all the way back at zero. Um, again, the arrows on both ends mean that this is array. Numbers keep going in every direction past zero into negatives. That's middle school. And then, of course, further on. We'll start, um, let's just start at like one. One, two, three, four, five, we'll say one third. And then to fully represent, again, those thirds, because remember the number model is just the same as a number line. So here would be one whole. So I'm gonna go one, two, because two dividing lines gets me three parts. So one, one and one third, one and two thirds, one and three thirds, or two, two and a third, two and two thirds, three, three and one third, three and two thirds, four, four and one third, five and two thirds, five. So here I'm at five and one third. Well, now I am just gonna start walking it back. You can do this two different ways. You can make a jump to each whole number, or you can jump by thirds. In this case, I think I am gonna jump by whole numbers. So if I'm starting at five and one third, I'm gonna subtract one whole, that's one. That puts me at four and one third. Now I'm gonna subtract another one. That's puts me at three and one third. And two more thirds to go. There's three. Where do I end up? Well, here's two, two and one third, two and two thirds. All right, we're two for two. We're getting the same answer. And now let's go into decompositional strategy. Here's five and one third. Minus two and two thirds. I'm gonna switch color real quick. Make sure this will maybe even show 
up. If we're thinking about thirds, your unit fraction is going to be thirds, which means we need three of them to make one hole. In this case, we have five holes. So really, let's go one, two, three, four, five. And I know this is three thirds, three thirds, three thirds, three thirds, three thirds, using that number bond strategy. And that one more third. Well, let's see how many thirds we have all together. Three, six, nine, 12, 15. And that one extra third gets us 16 thirds. Your parents, families, people around you, older brother and sister, cousin, may have taught you the little trick that you can just go five times three plus one. If you understand that, 100% fine to do it that way. It's a little bit quicker, but I do like students showing those number bonds to really represent what the fractions are and what five means when it comes to thirds. So now we have 16 thirds. We're gonna do the same thing with two and two thirds. It's getting a little messy here, but that's what your math paper is supposed to look like. Three thirds, six thirds, that's the two, plus two more, that's eight thirds. Well, now I have two like fractions. They have the same denominator. 16 tacos minus eight tacos is eight taco. 16 dogs minus eight dogs, eight dogs. So 16 thirds minus eight thirds, those units stay the same, is eight thirds. Again, in fourth grade, writing this as a fraction greater than one will always be acceptable. But if you really want to push yourself, go ahead and reframe that, change that back to a mixed number. Because when you see that numerator as eight, and you think threes, well, there's only takes three thirds to make one whole. So you should notice here that you have a fraction greater than one. So in my mind, that's three thirds, another three thirds. I can't go to nine thirds because I don't have that many. So it can't be three holes. So it must be three plus three plus those two thirds. That would be one whole, two and two thirds. That is how you subtract mixed numbers. I'm going to put a few problems on Costato. If you don't have any work to do in your workbook or on those Engage worksheets, um, feel free to go ahead and just take a picture of my whiteboard, copy it down, and have someone take a picture of your work and send it to me. And I can kind of correct it, and we can practice all at the same time. I will read Chapter 3 later on tonight. Also, don't forget, tomorrow is... Dress like a rock star day, and just because we're not a Kimball doesn't mean we can't still have Kimball Spirit Friday. I hope everyone is well, and I hope to talk to you soon.